Hello, welcome back to uh, How To Bloke. I've got my How To, how to Bloke um, DIY hat on today, so I'm going to do a DIY. No recipes, no food today. Uh, this is a Briggs & Stratton powered generator, and it suddenly stopped working uh, overnight. And I thought, well, what can it be? Could it be the spark plug? I checked that, it's alright. It was getting fuel. The spark plug was getting uh, fuel uh, to the top of it, because that was wet with fuel. So it wasn't the carburetor. So I thought it must be something else to do with ignition, because there was no spark, you see. So I've tested the, this uh, ignition module here. I'll show you how all this fits together in, in, uh, later on. I tested the ignition, mo ignition module of this machine, and I tested like that, the ohm value of it. And this was like 4.5 thousand ohms. Now, the book, uh, I think it's, I can't remember where I saw it. The range is between two and a half and five thousand ohms. Okay, so I'm. Uh, it, it, it's within the range, just about. But there's still no spark. Now this engine is simple thing. It can only be the spark plug. It can only be the the kill wire here is earthed on something like the, the, this. This here is touching a piece of the metal. So what could it be? It can only be this thing. It can only be this ignition module that's that's wrong with it. There is nothing else that, that's wrong. Uh, so I thought I would buy another one, a new one. So here we go, the new one. Now this is a new one here. Well, I haven't tried this. It's just it came this morning, this after, um, yesterday afternoon. So this is the new one. Now, does it look anything like that? Does it? The, the, the different the difference in it. But I'm, I'm told that if you look up the part number for this, which I'll tell you about in, in the description. The part number for this is this is the replacement for it. So don't be alarmed if it's if it's physically different. The internal should be uh, the same, if not better. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to we're going to just before we do, we test this, we're going to test this this the ohm value on this one. Now we're going to do exactly the same test. So if we're going to test this, we're going to go like this on the high tension and on the body of the ignition module and we get two oh wait 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 no no I'm being silly and we get five point two eight thousand ohms that's so higher than the, than the old one so will it work or won't it I don't know maybe we'll give it a go so we're going to install this on here and we'll just stop uh, the we're just going to fast forward the camera now whilst I do this We're back now. Fitted. This is the this is the the, the new uh, ignition module or armature, as they call it. And what we're going to do here, we're going to make sure that it is the right side up because it will say so on, on there. So, for example, the old one, wherever it is, the old one, the old one says this side out and cylinder side. All right. So make sure you got it. this side out is is on the top there. So. That will be, that's the correct way of doing it. If you don't put it around the right way, it doesn't work. So, the book says you've got to put this on this particular engine with this particular setup. The gap between this, this rotor and the ignition module has got to be between six and I think 10 or 11,000. Thou. I think 10 or 11, I can't remember exactly, but normally 10,000 is okay for these things. So we're going to turn this module round to the magnet. Now there's only there's one magnet along here. This, this is all steel, and there's a magnet there. So we want to put the magnet right opposite the the, um, the ignition module. We're going to offer in a feeler gauge. You've got two feeler gauges. It, it makes it easier. So what I'll do is this is a ten thou, okay? 
All right, why don't I use six thou or, 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 or something, something else? Well, I'm not so happy about their, their being too close. It's got to be close enough to induce a current, but not close enough so that it might hit the this rotor. So that's one of them. The other one. Right, nip them up nice and uh, nice and tight. So we've got ten thou here and we've got ten thou here. Let's just tighten these up a little bit. You don't want them too tight, I'll just strip the threads. Just nip them up like that. Make sure this rotor turns alright, it doesn't knock the ignition module in any way. That's good. Okay. Now we're going to try. Now we're going to try and see if we get a spark. So we're going to use a spark plug tester. This is a spark plug tester. It's just a cheap and cheerful one. There's nothing, uh, nothing fancy about it. Let's see if we get a spark. It might be too bright to 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 see it, but we'll give it a go. Uh, no, we won't. We won't give it a go. We'll use a spark plug. Right, this is the this is the right. This is the uh, original spark plug for this particular engine. Champion. I'll leave the, the stuff in the description. Okay, we'll see if we can get a spark out of this. Yep. Yeah, we got a spark out of that one. We got a spark out of that, for sure. So, uh, as you can see from my reaction, that's what you get if you get zapped by a spark plug. So, there must have been something wrong with the primary and secondary windings in this old one. So, even though it appeared to be the correct tolerance uh, within the uh, what, what people might measure, it, it wouldn't work. So, what we're going to do now? Because we've got this, uh, we've got this, this thing uh, working. We can't afford to uh, start it at the moment because uh, there is no uh, cutout. So there is no way of stopping this thing once it's started easily, uh, unless we fit the cut cutout wire. So that's what we're going to do. And this is the cutout wire we've got. A, we've got here. Okay. Uh, right. The thing you've got to remember that this is this is an American uh, engine. Briggs and Strad, I'm sure it is American. All the uh, screw threads and everything are going to be Imperial, okay? They, they're going to be uh, originally English. Make sure you've got an Imperial socket set or an Imperial spanner or something. All right, okay, so we've got, we've got um, let me just tell you, we put the ignition switch back. We've got the, this thing nice and tight. The, the rotor turns freely without bashing anything. We've got 10 thou gap between there, 10 thou gap between there. And we're going to put the felt thing back on again. Okay, let's have the nuts and bolts to go on this. Right, and then you've got to put this one in there. Go around to you, with this one. And there's screws that are supposed to go in here. Yes, but there's one that's got to go in there.
Okay, we we put the thing back together again. Hopefully, if you uh, you've been following that, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, speeded up thing there, you see how it all fits together again. It's as I say, it's not it's not difficult. It probably this is the first time I've ever done this, so uh, maybe half an hour to take it apart, half an hour to put it back together again. So it's not not a big deal. Okay, there we go. Uh, so it's all ready to go now. As I say, it got uh, had a spark from it, so we know that it sparks. So we're going to have uh, a little start up. Now I've ma made sure it's got some oil in there, that it's the correct level. It's got a little bit of uh, uh, gasoline petrol in there, the spark plugs in there, the spark plug cap. I've took it, taken that off of the 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 old um, the old uh, ignition module and put it on there. So even though that was delivered with a new one, I just changed it. I think it should have a spark plug uh, cap on there. All right, we're going to start this now. We're going to put the choke on. And we're going to switch the ignition to on. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The ignition module was wrong, even though if you measure it, it appears to be in the correct range of resistance but there's something there was some must have been something wrong between the primary coil in there and the, and the uh, secondary coil something wasn't wrong I mean, it was burnt out or uh, something was broken so there you go now before I go the replacement module for that you saw that it was different the replacement module for that I got on Amazon I got a filter I must do that at some point I've got an air filter for it a spark plug, albeit Chinese, it's still you know it's still uh, compatible with this, and I've got the module all for 21 euros, not dollars or pounds, 21 euros. So if you shop around, I mean, I've seen those modules there for for like 60, 70, 80 dollars. You don't need to pay that much. So have a shop around, and this is the this system I've got here is the. This particular machine, forget about the generator part of it, these things power lawn mowers and stuff. This is a Quantum uh, 55, it's a great machine, Briggs & Strand's great machine. So uh, this is the first time it's gone right wrong, in I've had this oh, getting on for 10 years, so it's the first time it's uh, ever gone wrong, ever. It's reliable, uh, super reliable. So there we go, I can go out and do some more DIY with this, uh, with this thing in tow. Anyway, that's all for now. Uh, next video will be a, a, a recipe, a food one, I promise, promise. And uh, I've got some uh, see, cooking here, I've got uh, quick tips here, I've got uh, DIYs down here, more things like this I guess. And uh, if you want to subscribe it's down there. So until next time.